And welcome to the Great Northern Sex Cast. Hello, everybody. I'm Kelly Guest, along with Colleen Rutino. And along with us today, again, we have Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> uh, so I go in well. Social media guru extraordinaire for Fantasy Gifts. That's who the ne- uh, Great Northern Sex Cast is brought to you by. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. It was a big, big weekend last weekend. Yeah, Valentine's on a Saturday, a four-day weekend. It's like a jackpot. Was it, was it good? <laughs> it was good. And, and we learned a, a couple of things. Uh, DVD is not dead. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> we sold a lot of DVDs. Mm-hmm. And every, I mean, just every, every people were all over the place. They bought lingerie. They brought toys. They bought uh, louver. I mean, it was just, people had a really good weekend. <laughs> 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 well, it's so blooming cold. I, I think everybody's retreating in to check out our, our the bounty, right? Oh yeah, they just it was definitely a weekend to stay in bed. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm headed back there. You know, we had to, we when I say me me and b- boyfriend here, we kind of postponed our Valentine's Day. We haven't celebrated it yet because we had a wedding on Valentine's Day. And it was a lovely wedding. It really was. Um, but it's kind of weird because it's just like, you know, let's just put this off and, and isolate it. Plus stay out of the crowds mm-hmm. was kind of, you know, our thing. But I heard that there was a situation that happened at one of the stores. Do tell. Well, you know, not everything about running a business is uh, a fun, or romantic and humorous. You can, in fact, uh, on Valentine's Day, have your heat go out at one of the stores in which uh, you spend a lot of time texting and talking to your employees, <laughs> trying to get the heat back on now, in the store. Was this during business hours? During business hours. Oh, and no. so the uh, uh, gal working is trying to help all the customers, trying to figure out why we don't have any heat, uh, texting Megan or getting a hold of uh, Eric and Michael. They ended up on their on Valentine's night going out to the store to meet our HVAC emergency crew. Okay. Because you can, I'm like, wow, that was just truly romantic. Yeah. Because there's, I mean, really nothing says Valentine's romance like a freezing cold store yeah. and waiting <laughs> for the cool. HVAC guy. <laughs> nothing says I love you like HVAC. See, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, <laughs> but that, yeah, I mean, they had to go to the store. That, I mean, this is a rooftop unit. So I... I mean, who's ever got it has to be on call for HVAC in the middle of February. <laughs> that's that's a guy that's dedicated to his job. Did you did you give him a free butt plug? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> it was his first visit to the store, and okay. I and I really do think that he wanted to get back home to bed. So <laughs> yeah, he, he got up. We got the got the heat pack on, and the next morning oh. we're all like, "Oh, please let it still be working. Please still let it be working." Because in a four-day weekend, it might have been the 15th, but it was still a heavy sales day. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Now, did you guys, were you guys open Saturday night until 11? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I bet you were busy right up till the close, weren't you? We had people ringing out at 11 o'clock. All, it was constant that all day. That is so funny. Yeah, because a lot of times, pretty much after 5 o'clock on the 14th, you know, it slows down, but it was constant i mean it was i think i think a trip to fantasy gifts this year was part of the uh it, valentine's mm-hmm. experience yeah mm. yeah i think a lot of people like would go do dinner maybe see a movie the movie that we'll get to mm-hmm. and yeah, then finish the night shopping for something special and yeah. i and i know they were shopping together because we uh sold very few gift cards mm. that's yeah. true hardly Always. any mm-hmm. that's interesting That is, and you know, that is more fun, I think, and a better idea, as you've said many times here on the Great Northern Sex Cast, Colleen, that people really should do that stuff together, or at least have their plan made if if only one goes in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just just handier, and it makes it a lot easier uh, for returns in the following two weeks. (laughs) As long as they're still boxed up and untouched, right? (laughs) We we, we do tend to get a, uh, especially with the lingerie, we will be uh, a little looser on our return policy because if someone is uh, a really tiny person and their partner bought something that's in size 2X, we will do an exchange. Okay. (laughs) Okay. No, that's really good. Well, speaking of uh, kind of cold and weather and everything else, I watching what's going on in the East Coast. How is New Jersey doing? The New Jersey branch of the Fantasy Gift family. Uh, they it, it missed them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we, they, it was. It, they're they're way you know in the southern half. It tends to swing around. Um, I do have friends in uh, Boston who have uh, snapped pictures out their window, and they're like, "See those lumps out there? Those are cars." Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, "Holy effing crap!" I mean, I, I I don't know if I'd want six foot of snow since the beginning of the year, but I could use a little bit here. I'd like to go skiing. Yeah. <laughs> and, I don't ski. I just drive, so I say no. Yeah. No snow. 
it's been <laughs> this has really been i mean the last two winners i thought were both just buggers and oh. this one has really with everything that's going i mean i feel sorry for the rest of the country but i'm really digging the fact that we have not been hit that bad this year mm-hmm. no it, it has been uh, outstanding for shopping and i have to admit i'm, I'm just fine with that <laughs> yeah no I, I i totally get it well good good job i was wondering if those guys were buried so I know this was a, a real serious working weekend for you guys, and I had the wedding or whatever. Did anybody get out to see the movie yet? <laughs> uh, a lot of people did. I just don't think any I, of I, us. My, 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 mom, my mom went to go see it. What would she say? And, and, you know, I, I, I caught bits and pieces of it, and she did think that it was, uh, you know, they obviously focused more on the romance. Because, I mean, if you made a movie from the book, it would be illegal. So you can't. So they had to focus more on the romance. They had to change it to, I guess, a more uh, consensual relationship. I'm, you know, I'm fascinated. I mean, that it did so well this weekend. Yeah. And I think, you know, this past weekend, I'm curious to see what the legs will be. Well, back mm-hmm. up though, because you said this on an on an earlier podcast, and I want you to this this bears repeating. What is it about the book that would be illegal to put on film again? Well. Because uh, there were very few things that are uh, uh, that you know I, I don't know what porn is but I know when I see it, but the showing someone having sex while tied up, uh, you cannot do. You can show someone um, getting spanked tied up, and you can show someone tied up, but you, there is no sex while someone is tied up. And is and so what is that? I mean, is there a law like did Congress pass this sucker and it's like on the books or what? It is. Yeah. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what the code is i just know that there is there are there are no movies in you know in the united states no you know no legal movies in which someone is tied up as having sex even in porn yeah mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. why a lot of our bondage movies there's not actual sex in the movies it's just the act of tying them up or whatever you know the the particular fetish is for that film but most of them do not have sex actually in the film that uh-huh. is a weird weird fact that yeah, it's, it's perfectly fine to sh- so show show <laughs> someone tied up getting killed in yeah. movies and yeah, which happens right. all the time but someone actually having sex is um yeah that's that's yeah. too terrifying for uh uh for the uh populace populace i guess okay mm-hmm. okay so yeah and that that is just a strange thing i never knew that until i knew you so mm-hmm. you know speaking of of the bondage things um and once again megan here is the facebook uh, master extraordinaire for the Great Northern Sex Cast. Check out that site. That is becoming my daily entertainment like feature because there's so many funny things in there that you you find, and I'm really impressed with you um, that way. But there's just a lot of great articles, funny stuff. We're starting to get some conversations started on there, which is really nice. Definitely. You can mes- message uh, the show, but you posted an interview uh, with Jessica Drake. Guys, explain who Jessica Drake is. Um, she is a really well-known adult star. Um, she's made a lot of uh, lists as um, one of the most popular adult stars of all time. She's been in the business a long time. Started, I think, around with like Jenna Jameson. She's a mm-hmm. little, little more older school. Some mm-hmm. of her movies might have been on VHS, if that mm-hmm. <laughs> gives a time frame. <laughs> oh, uh, look at her laugh! Like she's never <laughs> seen one of these creatures, <laughs> little booger. <laughs> Uh, I've had one for a while. Yeah, I also you? keep it old school. Oh, so. yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, she is also now has kind of a second career as a sex education. Um, and she does a whole line of films with Wicked Pictures, one of the major um, adult movie companies um, for educational, uh, a big one. I think this is why they talk to her specifically is she does have one. Um, that's BDSM for beginners, as well as all kinds of other things you'd want to learn about. Now, in journalism, when you when you use an abbreviation like BDSM, the rule is you have to write it out first, and then you can refer to it. So BDSM. Oh man, I just wrote something about this too, and I'm bondage. bondage. Probably get it right because it's it's bondage, submissive, um, discipline, uh, sado. Masochism. Masochism. Yeah. So yes. bondage, so, discipline, mm-hmm. sadomasochism. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Because they're, uh-huh. they're throwing that around. So did you read the interview, Colleen? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, she's really talking about, I mean, uh, well, she, she was very outspoken about the fact that she definitely likes being a sub or submissive. But the fact that there is, a, that it's truly a, an equal pursuit. I thought that was really mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, it 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 is not something that is done to someone. You you do you 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 do, you know, it's what you do with someone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The yeah. big thing people don't always understand is 
when you look just on the surface look at us this sort of relationship it will seem like the dominant partner has all the power they're the one doing the tying and the spanking and such but it's really the submissive person in control because they need to say you know guidelines yes you can do this yes you can do that so they know when they're tied up people are not doing things to them that they don't want to be done so they really have the control yeah mm -hmm. so that was a pretty interesting take on it and she she explained because she yes yeah, she, she made no bones about mm -hmm. the fact that she's a submissive but she, she did really outline how in fact they you know much control they really do have the other thing that i thought was interesting is she she pointed out that most of us the majority in fact are already engaging in bdsm in some form or another in our relationships did you guys read that part yeah, definitely. It, the thing is, there's such a huge range, like those four letters cover so much, whether it's, um, you know, sometimes you'll pull out your hairbrush and do a little spanking or a little hair tugging, um, all the way to, you know, people who dress up like ponies and live in a stable to be ridden 24 7 you know there's we, a huge range we were watching i can't remember the name of it might have been real sex saturday night you know when we finally got <laughs> home from the wedding um we'd behaved ourselves for so many hours and met so many grandparents that it was time to you know kick back some uh wine and uh, watch some porn but anyway <laughs> um yeah so they had that what's that called the pony fetish is it just pony play pony yeah. play mm -hmm. I, that was the first time we sat there and we both were kind of physically with our hands shutting our mouths. That was something else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, it, 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 folks are into a lot of different stuff and it could be the folks that are living right next to you. It could be your uh, family members. I mean, because it should be private, you know, it's, you know, you don't you know, need to know what's going on, you know, uh, out there blasting out to the universe, what's going on in your lives. For sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they, and these people were so happy to talk to the reporters and just share their story and show them their nifty little saddles that they had. And wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. They spent a lot of money on that stuff. Yeah, they want to show it off when they can, probably. <laughs> well, they were very uninhibited and they seemed like nice. I'm sure somebody in there was a CPA. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm absolutely positive. So going back to kind of our, our news uh, segment of the show, and I'll start with one that you found that I read the other day. This needed to be on the podcast today. The story out of Egan where the, the couple is having sex in the hot tub. Did you catch that one, Colleen? I, I did giggle over this one because I'm just, I, I, my parents had a hot tub it was inside but i can just imagine if you're like just meandering past your back window and you looked out <laughs> and people you don't know are doing it in your hot tub <laughs> and then it just it just would be fascinating but what i thought was the most the best thing about the article was the fact that at one point the gentleman did in fact have to urinate oh yeah he was nice enough to stand up and urinate out of the hot tub very, very so, classy. So I don't know if yeah. he had the, I don't, you know, there's no pee, you know, you know, pool or, you know, whether the sign up there or what was going on there. But I thought this was, um, I thought that was a real, yeah, that was a, a class maneuver there. Now, so, yeah. the mm -hmm. guy was like 22 and the, the female partner was like 50, I think. It, there was there was a definite cougar spin to the story. But I, I think the part that cracked me up too, in addition to the, the courtesy of peeing outside of the hot tub, was the fact that the homeowner's calling the police and giving like a blow. Well, they're making out. Oh my God, they're actually <laughs> doing it now. I mean, oh my God. God, if you haven't seen this uh, story, you should look it up on uh, Facebook, The Great Northern Sex Cat. That was one of the best ones. Another one that bears reading, and this one actually is was pretty darn educational. And I just want you to tell me the truth, Megan, and how you came across the one about how to clean your vagina, please. Um, actually, I found that um, uh, from the Facebook page of uh, a local gal, uh, the Sexpert. She does okay. um, blogs and some ed sex education. And I had seen everything... All these stories in particular, I think it was Gwyneth Paltrow talking about steaming your vagina and v vagina facials and all this nonsense. Well, maybe that's why she's named everything Goop. Maybe she right. maybe she's Goop. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. A steaming, uh, hot steam of St. John's Wort is not going to do the trip for you, uh, Goop, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, you know, it, the thing that I thought was so hysterical, and it was it was actually kind of an interesting article, but what I thought was so funny is they described vaginas as basically self-cleaning ovens. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, wow, okay, that, that explains exactly what they mean. Real clear for the layperson. Yeah, vaginas are uh, amazing. A lot of people don't you know, think about how incredible they are. Um, and yet, don't mess with them. 
they're made to fix themselves. It'll be okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you guys know about this one, but speaking of that, um, there is a gal in Wisconsin who actually made yogurt using bacteria from her own vagina. Now, she is an MD, PhD student. Um, she, she goes to Madison, and she wanted to see, make the comparison. So she did the regular. She made three different types using three, well, the vagina stuff, and then two other kinds. And it was kind of like a train wreck that I couldn't stop uh, reading because she got it to work. Because, and she very scientifically talks about the comparison between regular flora and flora from vaginas, which I thought flora was just, that just made me laugh in a very high school way. Um, but she actually made it and ate two bowls of it. That is a lot of yogurt out of one vagina. Yeah. yeah that's quite the yield. There. Yeah, I'm impressed. And I, I, I'll just send you the link. But anyway, so yeah, I thought that one was pretty funny. Um, do you guys have a, a theft problem there at Fantasy Gifts that you, I mean, pretty big or small or what do you think? There some t- it, a lot of times there's some grab and runs when okay. people are embarrassed about things. Uh, we do have uh, security tags at some of the some of the stores. The higher end items are in you know um, are in cases, but for the most part, people steal things because either they you know need them or they want to return them. You know, like you know, steal from store A and bring it back to uh, to another store and to get the yeah. money. Yeah. Well, we have with our return policy that doesn't really work for us. Okay. So that has that has helped a lot of that. But we do go through periods um, where it's just like, oh my god, you know, and we you know we have a little wall of shame when we find someone stealing a picture. Well, we have cameras that gets passed around. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you guys probably are way more efficient at catching people. Uh, my boyfriend owns a liquor store and. I mean, he has people stuff giant, the big bottles of Grey Goose down their pants. Down their pants, okay? And um, just whatever. But um, I saw a story that that did tickle me, and I'm a little disappointed in the store keep in this particular one. 82-year-old Annalise Young got arrested a couple weeks ago because she ripped off a bottle of perfume called Sexiest Fantasies. And it was $7.39 item, not as if that matters, stealing is wrong, mm-hmm. but um, the she caught her. She said, hey, and, and the little 82-year-old handed it back to her, and I, I think apologized, and she went ahead and had her arrested anyway. So now she, she is in court, you know, with something that's going to go, gonna go on her record. Now, I'm just curious. I mean, if somebody was, I don't know, what, what would you do? Would you still call, or do you? Um, if we can get it back, we tell them, get out. Because it just it's an insane amount of paperwork, and then everyone's going to blame me for owning an adult store. So there's a whole separate layer of of crap. I also have my, uh, uh, but there have been times. I mean, just uh, two days ago, I got a restitution check back from someone that had broke into our uh, Lakeville store. Really? Mm. Yep. So no, I will. I will press charges. We've had uh, most of the time, uh, not too much happens or they get caught. Uh, if they leave something behind, they get caught doing something else. And I, I fill out re- police reports, but I just got like $86 and 47 cents. Okay. Uh, from uh, uh, Dakota County. Okay. From, from the uh, guy. This is the guy that broke into the store, uh, obviously very drunk, uh, cut himself, bled on the window and then dropped his hotel room key. Um, it, Good it, job. They, they didn't. They didn't catch him right away, but they did eventually catch the guy because they, you know, were able to yeah, knew exactly who he was. Uh, we sometimes we catch the guy, sometimes uh, we don't. But uh, if I, depending on what's going on, if it's just shoplifting in the store, um, I will, you know, do my, you know, damnedest to to do, you know, do as much as I can to get the officers there, uh, you know, what's going on. But uh, you bust a window, I'm going to bust your ass. I know. <laughs> I go, I mean, it just, it drives me insane. And uh, especially when it's, um, I can tell when something's done, it's usually done by drunk people. Really? No kidding? Mm -hmm. Is that? After bar, the hour after bar close, uh, there are just sometimes when I'm like, if I wake up, I can't go back to sleep because I'll be, I'll be watching, you know, a phone because I'll see the alarm, you know, sometimes I'm like, I just, Duh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, I mean, again, being um, you know involved with someone who is a a retail proprietor as well. I mean, the the the, the stealing thing, it, it it's crap. And I mean, and it's terrible when when windows and then there's cost mm-hmm. involved in in getting things done. And I mean, we we we've had a crew pestering. Uh, you know, it's it's getting kind of bad. They they come into our place in groups, and they run a distraction. 
Mm-hmm. And then somebody goes and tries. And I mean, they're stealing like $50 bottles of expensive, mm-hmm. you know, really good stuff. Yeah. And um, but it's it, it's a bummer. But I, I, I just thought in this one, it was a little harsh. Now, on the other hand, the guys in Portland that were caught on security tape with, you know, how people will put nylons on their head, you know, for mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Boxer shorts don't work so well. <laughs> they can still see who you are fairly easily. And those mm-hmm. two both got caught and they were traced back. So those and the dumb criminals. I mean, you've seen it yourself. I mean, you can read these stories. They're, they're out there like forever and ever. My favorite story ever. We had someone break into our Fridley store. Um, they stole a bunch of lingerie. Okay. They then went on a crime spree. And a few hours later were caught at, I want to say like a Best Buy or something, breaking mm-hmm. into another store wearing the lingerie nice. that they had just taken from us. And it's like, that is caught red-handed. Yeah, yeah. Their friendly officers were like, yeah, I think we know where this came from. Because they'd already been to our to our store. And it was just it was just fascinating. Did so, they have yeah. little capes and stuff? Uh, the, I, I don't know if it came with a cape, but I'm pretty sure it was sort of a pink strappy thing with garter yeah, belts yeah. and everything. It was, it like was a, a baby doll. Lo- it was lilac and sparkle. It was, and, yeah. It, yeah. There, at, at, like several months later after the trial and all this sort of stuff we get like this box this box back of stuff we're like yeah that's fine that's- yeah. <laughs> we won't be putting that back out <laughs> just, they're like it, they just like dropped it off at the store it was high lo- we're like what's in this box we're like oh my god it's the stuff that was stolen do you guys do you guys when you get boxes delivered that aren't from suppliers at fantasy gifts do you guys get a broom and kind of poke it first before you <laughs> before you open it i would it's, it, yeah it's always it's uh i love when a couple of the companies will send um sample boxes and i'm like oh it's like christmas what's in here <laughs> that would I, be fun. I know i drive the buyers nuts because they're like okay i've got this to do i've got this to do and i'm in they're like oh look at this and they're oh. like oh oh it's the woman who signs my checks but, oh she's bugging me i can see i'm like okay i'll leave now <laughs> but it's <laughs> but i i get fascinated i want to know what's in the box i know I, <laughs> I love it i would be doing the same thing in fact i want to be there the next sample box that gets opened i i literally want to witness this for myself because I think that would be just like a, a field day of stuff. Well, one more, one more thing before we get into, um, I want to talk a little business today because um, you have such a perspective, Colleen, from who would think that a an upstanding tax paying institution would run into the, some of the crazy stuff that you do. We'll get to that in just a moment. But um, the world's first penis reduction has taken place. Have you guys heard about this? Uh, that one I missed. We usually spend a lot of time um, uh, helping folks with the, you know, the larger penis thing. And Who would yeah. ever think that, right? Well, in this particular case, because I was astounded when I saw this, but this is a kid who, um, he's only 17, and due to, I guess, sickle cell anemia, he had a penis that was 10 inches around, 7 inches long and 10 inches around okay and um so they had to really kind of because this hasn't been done before (laughs) they had to kind of figure out what they were going to do and they believe they know that it was caused by the disease so they literally went in there and just took out tissue on either side and he's thrilled he said he couldn't be happier he thinks it looks so much nicer uh you know i i I love science isn't that great i know what i'm saying (laughs) i'm I'm saying i think i think it's amazing that there i mean who knows how many other people if, if it's related to the disease that has to deal with this and you know that's going to help a lot of folks, and it, uh, it it's uh, pretty amazing that this young gentleman was uh well, you and know, you know what will, man, I mean? Obviously, I mean he probably felt like he had no choice, but that he was willing to um to to be the first. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know he felt bad about it, you know, and and he shouldn't have to live his life being inhibited as, in addition to putting up with the disease. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's right, one of right. those because I think that would be terrifying. Mm-hmm. Like if you went on a date with this person, you get back to their house, you're like, hey, and then they pull that monstrosity out of their pants. Mm-hmm. I would scream and run away. Indeed. <laughs> that would that yeah. would be one of the scary things. So so um, let's go ahead and move in. You know, Colleen, last week we were <laughs> the story we were talking about was um, UC, uh, uh, UCLA, I think not UCLA, but um, one at Cal State LA. That's what it was. They were there was a big controversy because there was going to be an adult toy party on campus using funds from the student activity fees that everybody pays as part of their tuition. And, and there were, you know, understandably people on both sides of the issue. And, and um, you know, I had a problem with it in that I don't think that, that a business should be coming onto campus to profit and being sponsored by student activity fees. That, that was a kind of a mm-hmm. capitalism conflict that I had going on there. Nothing to do with the, with the subject matter. But you and I accidentally stumbled down a path talking about bias toward your business. And you 
said you wanted to tell me the story about going to the women's expo yeah we've had uh we've there's been several things in fact uh just uh this past thursday no we you know, we'll get to the women's expo is that yeah people court us and they want us to be at things and and then they wonder you know and we bring everything that you can you know find you know that's not penis shapes and stuff like that but then they panic <laughs> when one person under you know out of ten thousand says i don't want my kid to see that and it's just fascinating because you can walk right down the store at walgreens and see a huge condom display and there's vibrators up top but at some, walgreens yeah it's, you know they're crap ones but what oh, the hell okay. and but they're there and it's just fascinating because we get treat you know you're like they, they they court us they want us to be there and then they panic uh, we were we were going to be part of a, a of a of a movie pre- there's a movie premiere on Thursday that movie Fifty Shades of Something uh-huh. they were going to ask us they they were uh, we were asked to be there you know sell some stuff promote you know, stuff like that which and, is a and, bondage movie yeah sort and of. then um, a couple of days beforehand it was mysteriously canceled but somehow the event never went away we were canceled uh. but the event happened and that happens. Uh, the event still happened, so I, I don't know for sure, but I know, you know, uh, but I'm like, it, it happens a lot. You know, we, we get quartered, stuff like that, and then it's usually where someone doesn't get permission, you know, like, people will ask, you know, will you do this? And I'll say, does your boss know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then a lot of times I never get a phone call back. Yep. And a lot of times it's, a, you know, it's, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm always fascinated over the fact that, like, high school booster teams will send us letters and I'm like it's awfully sweet that you think I mean I would you know that we would be a good donation for this fundraiser but it's high school this is not going to happen right but when other folks go through there but it we get you know uh they um they we were at um uh we were at the women's expo for years and then they get a new ownership and then people panic and and if I can't bring stuff what's the point of me being there Right. Yeah. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> I, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not spending, um, upwards to like sometimes $3,000 or more for a booth space mm-hmm. and going to be, you know, waving at people. Right. The point is to sell your product. Right. And I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not bringing the big red glitter dick, but I am going to bring, um, the, you know, the body wants and the, and the non penis shaped, uh, vibrators. And I am going to bring the, the box lingerie that has, um, a scantily clad woman on it. There's no titties hanging out. Yeah. You know, but it's good. You know, there's going to be condoms. There's going to be, yeah, it, it just, uh, um, it's always, always just fascinating that, you know, they, they, they you know, they court us that, you know, they want that, uh, they want that money and then they panic that, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing. And, and just, you know, for, for explanation, if, if no one's ever heard you talk about this particular thing, I mean, I do think it's hilarious. And I love I love your headquarters. you got a great building there, and it, it obviously serves you well. But you can't have your full name on the outside. No. When we uh, when we bought the building, the uh, owners uh, uh, in the areas, they just didn't want, it's like it, they didn't want to sell to Fantasy Gifts. And so they put in there that we would not put our name, our full name, on the uh, outside of the building in, like, in the actual contract and, and, and yeah and actually i don't care because i don't need everyone coming up and knocking on the door and trying to uh, sell me stuff or i would say at least once a month twice a month people um think it's a store and they'll be knocking on the door like no you know you got to go to st louis park you gotta go to bloomington but it becomes uh it becomes interesting i mean when it comes to uh, to in uh, uh just getting insurance for really? some reason uh, I have absolutely no claims. I have no issues. Yet, so, uh, someone uh, up. Uh, we are in a you know uh, do not insure list. What it, it is? It is. What? It is difficult. Hold it, it. it is really really difficult to get insurance. Uh, do they think somebody's going to have a dildo accident at, I, on the job? I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I I do I do joke sometimes that I don't want the heavy dildos on the top shelves because I have no idea how to fill out that workers' comp claim. <laughs> but for the, I mean, but just trying to find someone to insure my stores, like anybody else store would have, is um, people will not. You know, we were with one company uh, for ten years, and you know, was doing really well, and then uh, uh, they got new uh, ownership or new management. You know, some. Uh, underwriter decided that um, even though we'd had no claims and all we're doing is paying them money for 10 years, they no longer wanted to insure us. 
No kidding. And this is this is for like uh, inventory insurance and oh, building yeah. insur- just sure. the regular stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Ha. Huh. Just it's fascinating. You know, but we get uh, you know, it, 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 it just the, the the misunderstandings that people have about the business are are fascinating and it goes down to uh, just ignorance. Yeah. And, and uh, uh or just uh, you know, people not want, I mean, if you really, truly looked at the numbers in the insurance line, you would show that there's absolutely no issues. But then it goes to, you know, people's uh, 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 mora- uh, you know, morals clause sometimes, too. And it, it kind of cracks me up because, you know, people that come in and, and, you know, the general profile of your customer is someone who's... Um, healthy and honest about what they're doing, mm-hmm. if, if, if no further than in their own home, you know, mm-hmm. with whoever it is that they're doing it with. Oh, yeah, I mean, and it doesn't, and it's not just insurance. I mean, for example, uh, the land of Google, oh, Google, yeah. Google Plus. Yeah. It took me almost three years to get all of my Google Plus local sites right, and it kept, they kept flagging it and flagging it, and I finally got a hold of a human. It took me three years. You did? I got a hold of a human. I don't know anyone yeah. who's ever reached an actual human at uh, Google. I'm impressed. And, we, and I found out that I had to take my website off of the Google Play site because Google, for, as you, for, for all the things you can find in there, did not like my website. My Google Plus local site does not have the website. We can... And that's one of the reasons. I mean, you know, I have to be careful. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, this is Google. Yeah. So trying to find, you know. But uh, it's just been uh, it's a three-year battle to get my um, uh, to get the maps right for my stores. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Even the maps, huh? Yeah, it started there. Then I realized that it was um, uh, that they were going to go. I said, "Well, let's try this Google Plus local thing." And mm-hmm. so, and that's why there are we have so many social media sites. There are nine Google Plus locals. There are ten Facebook sites. There are uh, nine Yelp sites. There's a Pinterest site, a FetLife site. Uh, we've got the Great Northern Sexcast now, and it's been fascinating to try and keep up with these things. I mean, and you know, you know, we have our we have uh, folks that say nice things. There's trolls. There's folks that don't understand. Um, just recently, we had someone that was upset about a, a credit card charge. But the problem with that is that I have no control over that anymore. Yeah. But they don't know that, and they're just out there typing away. I mean, if something's wrong with your credit card, the loss, I don't have control over the credit card anymore. The slip doesn't have a number on it. I don't, you know, there's no way of finding out what's going on. So we have to tell them you need to call your credit card company. They will, you know, dispute it. You know, you won't have to pay it. They'll contact us. But I have, I mean, even if I could prove it, you still have to come into the store with your card. I can't just reverse anything. I have no, right. no way of getting to a credit card. Right, and and that's one of the things yeah, about and Yelp. So, so, yeah. yeah, and so they put that on there, and now they, you know, and there's been, you know, lawsuits on Yelp, you know, uh, people, um, uh, and, and Facebook, for paying people to, to get likes and paying uh, on Facebook, uh, paying people for, for, uh, for, for stars on Yelp and prominence and stuff like that. So I think that a, a, a large part of folks sort of know when you're looking at a site what you're looking at. But it does get frustrating to have to deal with um, how to be polite and informative to someone that's not being polite and informative to you <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a vast media. And it's just, it's, it's, you know, and we have 30 plus sites. And so, you know, like I said, you know, Megan just brought up this one thing, you know, about the, uh, she saw the, the Yelp thing or, you know, like I said, okay, like, this is how we have to answer that. <laughs> Yeah, or, or uh, going through the the Facebook, but I mean, why Google and Facebook can't have a, a main site that you can put in an address for for multiple sites is beyond me. Having to maintain that many different sites is insane. And and you get to do that too, don't you, Megan? Oh, yeah. yep, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I, a lot of it. I yeah, she say, does, she's got the Facebook and the uh, uh, and the Yelp. And uh, which I'm doing in the Great Northern Sex Cast one now, and the, and the Twitter, I've been trying to uh, keep up with the Pinterest and the uh, uh, Google Local and the FetLife, mm-hmm. and so, and it just you, you just you know you're like okay I need to do this, and it's I mean you're going to ten sites, 
this does not this is not a five second thing right yeah it is it is a strange uh thing the whole uh, online presence sort of deal mm -hmm. and it, it's like once you get down a certain path with some of the stuff it's really hard to to get out of the rabbit hole you know what i mean right. do you, there's do you no agree? going back anymore mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and so i mean just out of curiosity um i think the yelp thing is is an interesting point though what can you do if somebody maybe maligns you and you don't think it's fair on on yelp is there any recourse for you guys we there is we can um publicly comment on someone's say review which i think was the what mm -hmm. we're going to do for the credit card to yeah. explain we we don't have your purchase proof and credit card number on file isn't that a good thing you yeah know, essentially <laughs> yeah um or we can flag things you know we had someone who made a fairly inappropriate review it was obviously a troll so we try to flag it mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but you always have to be careful especially I run into this with Facebook where people um, are really angry and will put some misinformation or a complaint and you you can't type sense into them and <laughs> mm -hmm. in some yeah, ways it, you're just opening a bigger can of worms if you say anything then it mm -hmm. gets even bigger and gets even more out of proportion but it's like no you're you're i wish i could tell you you're wrong mm -hmm. right <laughs> no it's frustrating for the for the most part we just try and uh, deal with it uh civilly and realize that pretty much the majority of people that are looking at the site are going to realize what's going on mm -hmm. i mean because i mean when i um you know, if I'm looking at hotel reviews, I can take a look at someone and, you know, and I'm like, okay, this person doesn't like anything in their life. Yeah. <laughs> you know? oh, this yeah. is an angry, yeah. sad it, person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, or, you know, or, you know, this seems, you know, you know, this part seems valid or it's going through there, but just try and, you know, just try and answer with the facts. Mm -hmm. You know, the, these are the, re these are the legal recourses we have. I don't have, you know, I, I don't have the ability to do what you want to do. You can call your senator and your congressperson, but because yeah. I can't change the rules. I may not make them happy, but I, and, and, and it's frustrating for me too. I'd like, to, you know, I'd like to be able to absolutely positively trust everyone 100% of the time. But after 35 years in business, I mean, there's a reason why, you know, there's rules on a toaster that says do not defrost meat and toasters. Somebody did that. <laughs> I can't, you know, I, I would love for there to be a website. This would be a spectacular website. Who are the people that ruined it for everybody else? Okay. So that you know who to blame when, you know, when, when, when you honestly, you know, when something really went wrong, but there's all these steps you have to go through to get it fixed. Yeah. Who is the person that screwed it up for the rest of us? <laughs> because that's what I feel like. It's like, I, I'm dealing with just the stuff that's given to me. Right. And right. that's not, you know, that's not, you know, fantasy gifts related or sex toy related. I mean, that's everything. I could sell uh, my dad, you know, always used to sell like bowling balls and dolphin meat. And some of this stuff would, you know, would, would happen. Right. Because that was, uh, he'd have a lot of fun with that. He, you know, was speaking of, you know, like landlords, you know, people who don't want to call, you know, they won't even call us back if they're managed fantasy gifts or they'll say something. So my dad would call up and spend 45 minutes talking about how his new, um, uh, you know, his favorite thing was bowling balls and dolphin meat. He'd say that he's doing a lot of studies. He can show everything. He can, you know, that people who bowl really like dolphin meat. And they would, they would listen to my dad for 45 minutes about this. But, you know, renting to Fantasy Gifts was beyond, you know. That's amazing. So, yeah. Has it eased at all in the, in the last few years? No, in fact, it's worse. Really? Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to? Uh, just panic. Really? You know, people just not, you know, they just don't want to have to... to to deal with it um you know not having a conversation i mean just i mean the, the laws are incredibly unconstitutional in a bunch of cities but you do what you can yeah yeah you just go through there i mean i, I have to admit that it's you know sort of a it, it, to some extent it's a good thing too because it keeps other people out <laughs> uh -huh. well let's be honest i mean i you know it's not it's not it's not something that uh that other businesses don't know, you know, well, don't, and you guys don't know, understand so many mm -hmm. years of experience under your belt. Now it would be hard for somebody to come in with the learning curve ahead of them to, to catch up. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and, and folks that, you know, and there aren't a lot of different, um, uh, when, when I do see other stores or I do st see, you know, things when I travel or there's so that I haven't seen anything new in 20 years. 
Really? So, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm really glad. I'm so glad my dad figured this out. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, he, he laid the groundwork. Well, I mean, it's weird. I mean, I can see a parallel too with, with the, the liquor industry. I mean, we've got mm-hmm. blue laws here mm-hmm. in the state of Minnesota in the great North here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's just strange thinking. It's like, seriously, do you really think an alcoholic is not going to, is it's going to make one bit of difference whether or not you can go to a liquor store and buy stuff on Sunday? Mm-hmm. That just cracks me up. I'm from California. You can get anything anytime you want 24 <laughs> seven at, what yeah. we call liquor stores, convenience mm-hmm. stores had everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I I see the you know stuff going through the the news between you know the liquor and the cars. Now I don't your the car dealership is going to sell an X number of cars, and whether they're open up another day or not is not going to make any difference. And besides, there's no financing on Sunday, so mm-hmm. unless they unless financing starts opening on Sunday, what in the world a car dealership's going to do open on a Sunday is beyond me. I do think you're going to sell more booze on a Sunday. Oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, you see that you're just going to do that. I mean, I expanded my hours on Sundays. It's been spectacular. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. I guess if they can't buy booze, they have to find some other advice <laughs> to enroll. So you want us to stay closed no. on Sundays, too. <laughs> yeah. No. no, it's 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 an interesting just the way that the thinking that you think, how can an adult with half a brain actually think that that's a reasonable idea? Well, I feel like we live in a world where there's people trying to pass laws making yoga pants illegal right you know <laughs> so there's definitely some uh, less broad-minded people out well there. i would like to order a box of the chocolate buttholes and have that sent um to that person okay <laughs> yes i think that we should definitely yep. the chocolate buttholes that you put up on our facebook page and the picture is hysterical did you see what i wrote yeah. i said i yeah, must have been did. behind <laughs> yeah. i didn't know about yeah. these Um, But yeah, no, those are funny. I mean, I have to have like a supply of these because there are so many, I mean, how many times do you just want to give somebody a butthole? Yeah. I mean, the, the thing about cho- they're perfect. Yeah. We sold chocolate. We don't do as much chocolate anymore because it doesn't last. And it's usually the novelty chocolates, the quality of the chocolate yeah. is it, I mean, let's just think if you're going to have a penis gummy worm, you know, it's, you know, it's not too bad, but chocolate is, it's really hard to maintain. And then also you can't, it's, can't ship in the summer <laughs> right it starts to melt and your penis turns crazy shapes and, oh, and it looks oh. like the aftermath instead of what yeah. was right, yeah right? right well you know what i would like to do is lobby godiva mm-hmm. i think we ought to get godiva to, to to make us chocolate buttholes and then we're then we're we're good to go that, yeah that maybe if godiva made that good of chocolate i'd have to consider uh, uh Ooh. <laughs> those are great so um i'm excited this week because you were talking about you've been uh you've been working colleen for fantasy gifts and fantasygifts.com and there's a lot of this stuff do you guys have pony play stuff we have some okay. um we you have d- like stallion tail plugs and such and uh, raccoon I'm, tails i, I know because fridley I, loves those yeah. oh i'm sp- technically they're not raccoon i believe they were fox i was corrected about that. okay so gotta get my animals straight right on <laughs> yeah, what i've been working on this uh you know now that we got the website at the speed that we want and uh it's uh you know i can put things on and, and it's, it's not driving me insane but i've been putting on uh I mean, Thursday, I mean, this, this past week, we're talking, oh, I put a bunch of um, oh my bod stuff on. That's the vibrating, you know, you can have the vibrator go with your iPod and stuff like that. And that was selling. I said, so, okay, I put a lot of girl things on. Let's put some boy things on. And I said, no, we'll work on some chastity and some penis jewelry, you know, and a bunch of different things. And that evening, there's a question at our, our, our crystal store about male chastity devices. And I'm like, huh, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent the majority of my uh, Friday uh, putting on uh, chastity devices and male penis jewelry. And I decided I really like sparkly things. I, I know I that like, about you. I like the spark. I was, there's a little there's a little brass crown. There are cock rings that have blue lapis jewels in it. There's ones that have uh, inlaid chains. And oh, they're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the sparkly. If you guys ever watch that show, uh, Gigolos, on um, it's on Showtime or HBO. It's on one of the I, premium channels. I got rid of the I got rid of the uh, cable. So it it, it follows a, a group of um, male you know gigolos hookers so to speak in Las Vegas and um, it's it's a reality show. I'm you know I'm a lot of it's staged or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they um, it's pretty interesting. And one of the episodes um, was. <laughs> male chastity and this this woman hired and they're all just hot i mean they're just you know they're good looking guys and you know stuff like that anyway she paid him a boatload of money to come to his apartment and put this box 
on his cock that, I mean, I guess there was some way that he could urinate or whatever, but she had him locked up for, I can't remember, but it was days. And then he finally, you know, got that thing off, but that was her whole fantasy. And she, she did some speaking to him. Like she, you know, dominant speaking, but there wasn't mm-hmm. really anything else other than the cock locking that went on. Uh, thoughts. <laughs> yeah. well, why is that? I can't figure out why that was fun. I I'm it's lost on me. I'm just saying. Control issues, probably if you're you know if you're paying someone for that. But we uh, we've had a lot of requests, and I finally found uh, some good companies that have some male chastity, and uh, I'm I'm going through that, and I, I put them on the site, and I I'm looking through everything, and I'm trying to decide. I said, okay, I think I can handle with the locking up of the body parts. Yeah, but this is fantasy gifts, and I don't want to you know it, which is I I, I mean I. It's my company. I get to make decisions. I decided that if you're squishing something, I decided to stay away from the squishing of the body parts. So cruelty-free locking. Cruelty, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Okay. There's a, um, it, it is fascinating because there's, you know, there's uh, locking leather shorts and there's locking uh, G-strings and then there's uh, little plastic cages or chrome cages to put the testicles and the balls in and the cock rings and you can lock them up. And there's a... Uh, uh, for for the women, it's mostly just uh, straps. There's actually a lot more chastity devices for men. No than there is for women. Really? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knew? Yeah, because I, I, cause I'm trying when I'm putting things on. It's like, okay, I put on some stuff for women, and now I'll put on some stuff for men. And when I'm going through some of the bondage stuff, I'm like, here's some picture. Oh, good. Here's a picture of a guy tied up. Here's a picture of a gal tied up. I mean, I, I really try. <laughs> and have it be as equal as possible. Do you know how much I mm-hmm. admire your dedication? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but I had to walk around the office the other day and go, okay, I brought up all of the gags because, you know, the ball gags and knife out and different things. And I'm like, what are people asking for? Because I'm not in the store. I was like, well, here's a conversation. I'm not walking to the office. And, well, the, there's a bone bit and then a blue one. And then I'm going to- A what? Some, it, a it, what? It looks like a bone. Okay. For, 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 the dot, for the puppy play. People like to dress up like puppies too. Oh. So this is a, mm-hmm. yeah, it comes in white or black. And I'm like, okay, I'll put this one on. And, but once again, I was looking at the, you know, what's shiny? Ooh, this one's shiny and pink and this one's blue. And- <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can we just, you know, just by way of, of sparing me several more weeks in the future where I go, really? Again, what, let's just go down the list of little furry animals that people like to dress up and screw in. Mm-hmm. Everything. Thing. Yeah, I what? think the whole Noah's Ark of I'm it's it's some, some kind of internet rule, right? If um mm-hmm. if it exists, there's a porn version of it and mm-hmm. I think it's the same for any animals yeah, there, or anything you yeah. can think of. We can really. uh, um one of a one of the lines that I will putting we will be putting on has uh, a little piggy tail mm-hmm. and then there's ponytails and uh uh there's the bunny tails. Uh we have pretty much yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, the I, dog in particular is pretty popular. Yeah, yeah. though the at, at right giving now. the the commands and that sort of thing, making them eat out of bowls. It's uh, that shows up in movies a lot too. Well, collars have been around for quite some time, mm-hmm. but that, mm-hmm. I suppose that's. I, I'm just sitting here thinking about all the little forest animals that that we're managing to <laughs> Those to poor woodland creatures. I know exactly. Oh my god. So okay, so going back to the to the bone, you under your boy toys here. You um you had nipple play. Nipple. And, uh, talk to me. Uh well, one thing that's really nice about the nipple play is that everybody has the nipples. You know, I mean, okay, I, I have to admit, you know, some breast cancer survivors no longer have the nipples, and I know that they miss them. But for the most part, people have nipples, and there's the clamps and uh, vibrating clamps. Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, nipple suckers, so where if you uh, want to make the nipple larger, you know, you can use a vacuum to uh, uh, pull that out. Oh. Um, some people it just... Nipples are pretty erotic, and people like to decorate them with clamps mm-hmm. and jewelry, and uh, sometimes there'll be uh, nipple clamps that go from a collar down to the nipples, or yep. clamps that go from the nipples down to the clitor, uh, or down to a cock ring. Uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of different types of nipple clamps out there, mm-hmm. and okay. and uh, we found some uh, gorgeous nipple uh, jewelry. There's uh, a nipple uh, sequin. Uh, not so not, not not the word sequin, but there's like stick on nipple decorations. Oh, fun. Of little it's like gems. Swartzky. Yeah. Oh, Swarovski. Yeah. Oh, Swarovski. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, so you can decorate your nipples. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the stuff I wouldn't wear through airport security. 
But, you know, right. yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, I mean, I used to, uh, the nipples are popular male and female. Okay. So once again, I was looking for things. Uh, most most men do not put crystals around their you know uh, around their nipples, but I was looking for um, uh, uh, nipple play stuff that is you know male and female. Okay. Uh, it, it and it's yeah you know, and for the most part, once again, it's sort of trying to find, you know, they will just a lot of the nipple toys they will put on female models, and so I like okay, I have no choice, I have to put this on, but I really do you know look for you know masculine items too when it comes to nipple play and other items going back to airport security for just a moment mm -hmm. made me made me wonder to myself and i think i think i guess of reps in your business you know how you have to take your laptop out of the bag like would you have to take the dildos out too mm -hmm. i mean seriously the most of stuff gets shipped when we have our seminars and, and stuff like that the um uh, uh, everything arrives over at the uh, uh, hotel where we're having the seminars in, in boxes the days before, and uh, they will uh, they do check their bags. <laughs> the yeah. bags the bags get checked. It just do do much work to go through. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you are personally traveling with like vibrators or something like that, we would recommend maybe not carry on. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they'll probably <laughs> ask it. And I'm sorry, but I don't want a TSA agent. That would ruin a vibrator for me from forever. I'd be done with right. it. To have, you know. Someone the, else pawing over it, yes. Yeah, pretty much. Even if they're little rubber gloves that they're so fond of. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Yeah. Well, well, long before 9-11, uh, when I was traveling down New Orleans for uh, spring break, my brother went to school down there, and he, was, uh, and he said, okay, he had me bring down a bunch of stuff that he could just leave in you know, just randomly place in the fraternity house just to freak people out. And I brought down <laughs> in my carry-on bag, this is long before there, this huge double, a bunch of double dongs and these huge, like two foot long, massive dildos. And this is, I did in fact bring them in my carry-on. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Good I for kept you. waiting for it. Went right, but this is, like I said, long before 9-11. See, you know, speaking about the people that ruined it for everybody, the terrorists did one hell of a number on, on travel. I'll tell you that right now. And not just because of, you know, of the death and destruction. It's really changed you know, for the worse. So the other thing, um, the rabbit vibe line, Colleen, I'm a rabbit fan. Talk to me. We have uh, a company that we've been dealing with, uh, brand new, is uh, coming out at the end of this month with a brand new line of ri rabbit vibrators. Is it, is it the same original? It's, yeah, well, yeah, when, when you're, pretty much when you're talking about a rabbit vibe, you're talking about a, a dual motor vibrator that has it's not just a straight vibrator there's going to be a, a part at the end for uh clitoral or, or anal stimulation however you know depending on the direction that you're using it and we're i mean we're going to be uh, pretty much the first folks in this area to get them really and so it's uh when we uh, get them we'll bring it in i'm just very excited about that i think they're supposed to be shipped february 28th and okay. uh, at their last seminar, the uh, rep was there, showed them to everyone, and she hadn't, uh, they're rechargeable. She hadn't recharged these things in a couple of days, and this sucker started right up. I mean, it was spectacular. Really? And mm -hmm. just a note, too, again, I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated with the idea of the, the ones that you can recharge with charger. You say that, by and large, those tend to be more expensive? Yeah, this, what's um, also one of the reasons we're bringing it in is that it's a nice mid range, made well, really strong, rechargeable. Oh, that's cool. But does not cost you a car payment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, any idea of, of the basic range? I'll have to check into that. I, I'm pretty sure they're going to be under 100. But I'm wow. not. But I'm uh, not sure that we did. We did get the information from uh, 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 from Tara, but I'll bring it. You know, I'll bring it in. Um, but it was fascinating because we just got uh, we got another new thing in. We finally got in stuff this past Thursday. We got all we got in all these. Um, uh, kits and we you know you generally you know for uh, and they were all 50 shades themed okay and it was fascinating because they're the most amazing deal really? and they're really spectacular i mean you know for like a hundred dollars you get a, 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 a paddle and cuffs and, and a vibrating ring and all this sort of stuff and uh, we were absolutely fascinated that they did not go as well as we thought and really? so we're just wondering if you know one we got them in too late or if the folks were shopping together, or folks didn't realize what a spectacular deal mm -hmm. this stuff was, and we're you know just um, it just goes to show that you know a lot of time you know not everything is just uh, hit it out of the park right away. I mean it's a great deal, and so we're um, but it was just it was, it was fascinating that it it was all I mean one of the items actually had each item that was on the cover of the box, and what was nice is it wasn't the official Fifty Shades merchandise. Because, um, 
Uh, but it was uh, from our comp- uh, company called Spore Sheets that we just adore. Yeah, you're a big fan of those I guys. I love that company. You know, I think it's I think it's hokey. I'm sorry, but um, you know, I'm after after I grew out of you know my Disney movie phase and and buying the characters uh, you know from the movie. I really don't think I'd want to buy. Um, a franchised version of sex toys in my bedroom. I think I'd rather just go it alone and, you know, yeah. I don't well, know. That, that, like I said, that's one of the reasons we chose this line versus the um, versus the branded ones. Because, I mean, it's it, 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 you a know, spectacular deal because that's what we look for. Yeah. Is that if is it well made, is it a spectacular deal? And so we were, uh, we, we, were, we were really quite fascinated that they did not fly out of the stores. But it's not like, you know, one, one of the things I really, really, truly love about Fantasy Gifts merchandise is that it really doesn't have an expiration date. That, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it just, yeah. I mean, it can, you know, you've you got some lubricants and occasionally, you know, we do have some novelty candies and stuff like that have, you know, that have dates. But, um, you know, a couple of years ago when we did, get, you know, New Jersey did get hit with an ice storm. You know, the merchandise wasn't going to rot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and and that and that's really funny too because, um, well, going back to what you said at the beginning of the show when we were actually discussing Fifty Shades of Grey, which we're wondering, you know, if if the momentum will continue or no pun intended, if it's mm. going to peter out here. So, <laughs> you know, you've still got some time for that movie to kind of catch up. So keep us posted on it because that's a that's a, a good one. But I wondered, like, if. What, how often do you have to replace some of the things if you are a regular purchaser of of toys and things like that? I mean, like, how long do they last? You mean like the uh, uh, what the popularity of an item, or someone personally buying? Personally buy- okay. buying. Well, it okay. Just like anything, for the most part, the more you spend, the better the item is. I okay. mean, it just that's yeah. It's just yeah. I mean, it's just how it is. I mean, I, I, uh, um. So, you know, a, a pair of shoes at, at Target is not going to last as long as a better made higher end shoe for the most part. Same thing. But that said, uh, we absolutely, especially after 35 years, if just because it is inexpensive, it doesn't mean that it's a piece of crap. We okay. bust our butts. I mean, we, uh, to, to carry lines of an inexpensive product. Now, a lot of folks, you know, that said, a lot of folks will change their toys when they get a new partner because you don't oh, you don't want to be oh, yeah you don't want to be sharing you using, using using items you know with someone you know someone else um if you're talking about uh um, if you have a waterproof vibrator and make one mistake and forget to um ch- uh, close it or put the you know uh tight enough you could possibly uh um uh ruin it there or if you leave the batteries in that's uh it will you know it's just like any other thing you don't you know any uh you, yeah. waterproof versus water resistant and, uh, yeah, right. yeah. okay <laughs> and there's different things but for the most part there you know some of the the higher end silicon toys should last you for years yeah. i mean yeah. if you if you store if you uh, store them separately um from each other you make sure that the batteries come out uh, when you're not using them, you keep uh, or you keep it reach you know recharged. If it's a rechargeable at the right rate, you, you know uh, it. I mean, these things can last a very long time. Okay, mm-hmm. very cool. So yeah, so everybody, um, fantasygifts.com. Colleen, you've really been that's been a huge project for you recently. Really adding a lot. Yeah, my mom. She's like, "What are you doing?" I said, "Put stuff on the site." And she goes, "You're not done with that." I said, "It's the internet. You're not done. <laughs> you're never you're done. D- you're not done <laughs> with the internet." Uh, what I'm trying to do is, uh, you know, obviously our, you know, we've got the multiple sites, you know, they've, you know, got our local site that has the stuff that's in the stores. Plus I've, I'm trying to add the items that people ask for that are just difficult for us to carry. Um, a lot of times, uh, I, I know that it gets uh, tough for our buyers. They're like, cause we, we'd like to have all this stuff. And, and I said, well, just tell them when, win the lottery, I'll get it all. <laughs> yeah. Cause there's just, I mean, you have to make decisions and I don't care what business you're in. Um, and so I've been working, uh, you know, on that site, adding some of these things in that people have asked for, but just not enough to carry them in all the stores, or they're just um, it, it tend to be too expensive, or there's too many choices. Yeah, and, you know that you know becomes you just like how do you choose? And so if I put it online, then we can have all the choices. Um, and then you know our partner site. I mean, if you really are looking for something. Um, They've got 12,000 items. Wow, okay. It's one of our distributors. So you're going to find something there. Okay. I mean, there's a, a, Doc Johnson carries a line of dildos that is, it's so vast, 
that it would practically take up our entire dildo budget if we attempted to put it in the stores. Okay. And it's an interchangeable a dildo system. Budget. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, really, because there is, there's a, you know, there's, a, you know, there's budgets we have, you know. And so the the best place to put something that's that big is online. Uh, because it's just yeah mm-hmm. yeah sorry that could, that <laughs> i think of other help. places to put something no. oh, <laughs> god. oh my god i'm so next meeting with my financial planner yeah. i'm gonna say we need to add another category it's a dildo budget, budget. <laughs> and so just to see what he says and, and so and we're uh, like i said and, and the reason i'm just really excited about this is that one i mean the other day i don't like just you know the little things I, I consider wins when i forget how to put an appropriate site picture on the website and not screw it up and don't have to ask for help i just like oh little victory <laughs> yay uh because it is such an important part of how people shop nowadays okay and because there are just so many choices and you know just trying to get it trying to get it right you know, because I spent a long time with our old website going, okay, this person's got to be able to fix it, got to be able to fix it. And I finally pulled the plug on it because you, know, you just, you don't, it's, you know, it's not easy to build a new website. No, it and, is. And, you know, you're going through there and uh, it just, it's, it's fun right now being able to, you know, the, yeah, there's still a few things we're trying to figure out here and there. And, um, but for the most part, to be able to focus on product, to be able to focus on what the customer wants versus the mechanics of it. It's just been an absolute joy the past few months. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, yeah, it's been fascinating. Well, and just as we wrap up here too, I just have one kind of final question because we have um, Megan here, social media guru and and uh, just all around important person at Fantasy Gifts. Which um, and thank you by the way for making sure that all the stuff that we've talked about gets posted. There's so many fun articles. So if there's anything that we've talked about, you want to see the actual stories. Megan has been fantastic about getting stuff up there. But do you think that the internet has been um, a boon? to you um, in allowing people to explore before coming in and kind of break down some of their resistance or I don't know has it been good or bad would you say for your for your line of work I think for in general in retail it's uh, you know it's it's your double-edged sword yeah Uh, people have more information but it is you know I mean I try I mean desperately try to have I mean I've got nine brick and mortar stores I've got an office there's families there's you know there's there's expenses Mm -hmm. that some fly-by-night web company might be able to sell something for less, but mm-hmm. you have no idea where that came from. <laughs> you have no idea if it doesn't work out to send it back. You have no idea. You know, I mean, I look at some of these uh, items that are online for less, and I'm like, I can't even tell where that's made. Yeah. You know, and you, so you don't know what you're getting. So you do know what you're getting if it's at Fantasy Gifts. And if we don't recognize a toy, that's usually means it might be pretty questionable because we know a lot of things going through all of the major reputable toy companies Mm -hmm. so we're like i've never seen that packaging before so Mm -hmm. i don't know that it's a good idea to pick that up so it's been great for education and but it's been frustrating to see um someone who like uh, we have several lines that have minimum pricing and i sign agreements that I'm not going to sell this oh, item sure. for less. Sure. And when I see, you know, some random um, thing on Amazon where they've got this item for less, I want to go insane. Yeah. Because, you know, that person isn't paying for, you know, isn't paying for health insurance. Or that person doesn't have nine stores, you know, uh, workers comp insurance. Yep. And, you know, it just, and, you know, so I'm, so there's this line. This is one of the reasons, I mean, I want, you know, that's one of the reasons I decided to, I'm going to be an insane person and have two websites so that I can choose what I want to have out on the you know web sure. and plus have the stores because sometimes you just you need to see an item in person. Oh, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> because no matter how many times that we put, um, you know, we, we measure something, we do this or that. It's just visually there's I mean there's a there's one item and I'm I'm blanking the name of it, but it's a fun factor item. It's sort of S curved, and my brain always thought it was a larger toy and when they came in the other day i happened to be in the warehouse and i opened it up and i went this is smaller than i thought and i went back and looked at the web you know website and i said all the dimensions are there but you just when you're looking at something on a, a web page you know everything looks the same size yep and you know so you so that's what's nice about having the 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 store and the um you know and the websites because i can it can mirror each other and if i you know and if on the partner website, if there's a line I don't like, I just turn it off. There you go. <laughs> you know, I yeah. don't, ha- you know, it, it, it's going through there. If it's, if it, you know, on there, I'm, you know, I'm happy to have my name associated with it. 
Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that this has been an ongoing theme um, throughout the Great Northern Sex Cast, and certainly it's something that you um, practice as as head of fantasy gifts, um, Colleen. Is that you know go ahead and use the internet to do some shopping, but if it's stuff that you carry in the stores, come on and take a peek at it in person, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Touch think, and feel it. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the most beneficial things is we have a lot of guys will come in with a shopping list from their partner from our website so they know oh, there okay, you go. this is what you can get this is what won't get you in trouble and <laughs> I don't even buy shoes online let alone anything like that so we always recommend you know being able to really feel what you're getting so I think we'll wrap it by saying this not only do you do you not know where it's been if you don't work with a trusted source think about where it's going if that you know what I mean exactly. <laughs> okay I'm exactly. just saying you guys um, thanks great job today and uh, we'll be back with another episode of the Great Northern Sex Cast next week. Take care.